Hello, my friends. My name is Gene Arnold, and thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Regular Guy Mountain Biking. So if you happen to be one of those people that subscribe to me on Instagram, and I really, really, really wish you were one of those people that would subscribe to me on Instagram, you may have already seen a crash that I had not too long ago. We're good. Right. Yep. You know, I was totally like, do I wear my chest protector today? That crash happened to have happened on this trail. This trail is 99 over at Mountain Creek Bike Park. Now for some of you folks, 99 might be a walk in the park, but for me, it's a pretty hard trail and it definitely got the best of me. I crashed towards the end. So now after going over that crash and how I rode this trail with a few of my friends, a lot of them all agreed that I simply was not riding down this trail fast enough. Now that's kind of scary, because again, I told you, 99 is a hard trail for me. So to have to do it even faster, that's a little, little bit scary. So the goal of this video is to simply follow out the trail and pick all the right lines, plan out where I should go slow, where I should go fast, and heck, maybe where I even need to get off the ground a little bit and jump over something. That's what we're gonna be doing in this video, figuring out the best way to get down 99. Now, the coolest part of the whole thing is that I don't have to do this alone. I've got a buddy waiting for me down the trail that's gonna help me figure this whole thing out. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing good. Thanks so much for coming out here. Folks, if you don't know my buddy, Jeff Lanowski, he's a professional trials rider, a professional mountain biker. He also runs the YouTube channel, Trail Boss, and he's also pretty much an all-around great guy, and he's willing to come out here and help explain to me how to hit 99 and maybe just trails in general and get a better understanding on what I'm doing wrong and then we can hopefully transfer those skills to the trail and I'm just hoping you guys can pick up on some of them along the way. So we're at the top of the trail. We've come in about 20 yards and this is the first feature on the trail and it's a pretty sizable roll down. Um, this is a great place to focus on where you want to try to make sure that your weight is centered through the pedals. You're not going to be hanging off the back of the bike. You're not going to feel too much weight. If you watch the video here, you'll see that my bike kind of just rotates under my body. And it's pretty typical when you're riding new trails for trail, trail designers to put a feature in. They typically call these squirrel catchers. <laughs> so if this psychs you out, it's probably not a good idea to continue down the rest of the trail because it's pretty common for, for trail builders to put something at the beginning that's indicative of what you're in store for the rest of the way down. Weight centered over your pedal, let the bike rotate underneath you so you stay nice and balanced. All right, so this is the next kind of area down this trail. And it, this is again, perfect because this is gonna help you on 99 specifically, but any trail. So what's unique about this section is you have a slick rock section and a rocky section after it, but both of them are off camber. So a couple, couple best practices when you're riding this kind of stuff. If you're not familiar with the trail, this is what you're gonna wanna try to do. So when you hit an off camber section, a great best practice is to try to take the higher line because you're most likely gonna start to migrate to the lower side. So on this first section, the lower section, if you start on the low side, you kind of have nowhere to go, especially when this gets wet right here. You want to try to start high so that you could end low, worst case scenario. And then heading into this next section, it's rocky. So your chances are you're probably going to get bounced around a little bit. So if you start with a higher line, if you've never in this trail before, start with a higher line. And if you do get bounced around a little bit, you still have room to go down slope down the, the, to the other edge of the trail. And then the biggest mistake I see people make when they're riding rocky sections like this is they meander around too much looking for the perfect line. So I'm not saying go ride over a boulder or ride something over your head, but try not to spend so much time fishing around for the most perfect line. Look for the straightest, smoothest line overall. And the best way to do that is just remembering to keep your head up and look far ahead. So again, you're planning and not reacting. All right, now we're getting into one of the sketchier sections of the trail. This is a big, long, sustained uh, slick rock, slab section, uh, whatever you want to call it. But this is where your technique on the bike has to be really good. And that's why it's Im really important to practice that body position on easy trails so that when you get into something where you're at that threshold, it's just second nature, okay? On the East Coast, New Jersey particularly, these slick rocks could be just like the name says, pretty slick. In Sedona, you might have more traction, but a really good idea is the first few times you've ridden a trail, especially something like this, where it goes 
slick rock and you can't see what's after it, you really have to make sure the first few times that you're completely in control because it's really hard to get back under control and really slow down the bike once you've gone too fast on this kind of stuff. So unless you know the trail and you know what's coming up, whether it's a catch berm or clear run out or whatever, use extra caution. Try to stay low on the bike, drop your heels, do everything you can to keep your traction going. And I'm gonna do a little demonstration to show you how the front brake is so important because if I ride down this and use just my front brake, I can control myself. If I only use my rear brake, I'm just gonna skid and you'll see I just keep accelerating and that's not a good idea and you're not gonna feel safe or under control doing that. All right, so this applies to 99 specifically or pretty much any kind of slick rock section you're gonna ride. You've probably all heard, get your butt off the back of the bike, use only your rear brake, your front brake's gonna send you over the bars. I'm gonna show you how you keep your body weight low and centered, actually even a little bit of weight on the handlebars. This first section right here, I'm gonna go in only rear brake. You'll see that I skid out of control. When I get close to Gene, I'll use only front brake. You'll see how I get it back under control. And then on the next section, only rear brake again. And you'll see, even though I'm centered on the bike, it's not gonna do anything. All right, let's give this a shot. We'll try not to crash while intentionally trying to skid. All right, so you can see I have really good tires, but it does nothing. Here's front brake. This is a pretty steep section and I'm not skidding. Still front brake. As Soon as I go to rear, it doesn't matter where I put my body weight, I'm skidding. So the moral of the story is you need to use both brakes. The misconception is since your front brake is so much more powerful than your rear brake, you just have to be mindful that when there's a slight G out or something that could hold up your front tire, it's going to magnify it because that's where all your power is. So when you get to those specific sections, that's when you need to go light on your front brake. Or if you're in a turn, because then you're asking your front tire to turn and brake and the demands could be too great. So if you're going in a straight line, your front brake is going to be your best friend. All right, so you just navigated that first section of Slick Rock. This is the final chute. And this is a, something where if you're riding heads up, you should be able to look far enough ahead and see that this outside line is gonna be your better line for a couple reasons. So it's taped off for the race this weekend, but you can see once you get to the bottom, it's pretty rocky and pretty blown out. So it's gonna, you're gonna have some speed. It's gonna be hard to really have a ton of control and you need to make a left turn. So taking this outside line is definitely gonna make that turn a little bit mellower so you don't have to do so much versus taking this inside line, you're essentially gonna do like an S turn. So you're adding a turn right there and this is pretty slippery. So that's a chance to crash. And then it's also making that turn down there quite a bit tighter. So the outside line is gonna be much better. And if you're riding with your heads up, you should be able to see that as you're riding down the trail and just try to do the most fluid, smoothest turn possible. All right, so now we're towards the end of 99 and we're in the really, the roughest spot of the whole entire trail. The first part has a lot of that slick rock and that makes you use both brakes, have proper body position, uh, try to ride a straight line, all that kind of stuff. But when you get into this really bony stuff over here, this is where it gets really, really difficult. So we're gonna talk about a couple line choices, how the really, really fast racers are gonna be doing it, how I've seen some uh, slower riders take some line choices that look easier, but end up being more difficult and probably what is the best bet. And that's a combination of what the really fast guys are doing and the really slow riders are gonna be doing. Overall though, if you were to completely generalize, the really fast guys are gonna to try to take the widest turns possible when they're in this really rough stuff to just try to make things as smooth as possible. The reason for that is because when your front tire is trying to go over rocks and roots, it's a lot easier to do that in a straight line. So if you're turning your wheel too much, trying to ride around stuff, it's more likely to get caught up on rocks and roots. And I think that's exactly what happened to Eugene. You were making a little bit of a turn and when you go over a rock or a root, it amplifies that force and it could crab your handlebars underneath you. So the really fast guys are probably gonna take this outside line. They're gonna actually use this rock here as a berm. And that's just gonna make this, all this rough stuff more gradual and more gentle. And then that's gonna set them up for a really straight shot down this hill. So we'll walk down it, but your fastest, smoothest line is gonna be to your rider's left. And the more typical uh, meandering intermediate line is they try to sneak through this crack over here and I've seen lots of people get their foot pinched against their pedal and they could tip over, hit your bottom bracket. This ends up being a really tight turn. So 
what happens is you come in here and it looks easy, but it ends up being a lot more difficult. So your best line is gonna be somewhere right in the middle. So I would recommend you take, you split the difference. You come in in the middle, you ride on this rock. You have one stair step drop to, to deal with, but overall it's a pretty mellow turn. You don't have to make a really tight turn with your handlebars and it should allow you to ride over this stuff. All right, so all the keyboard warriors told Gene just use more speed and when the Pro GRT happens here this weekend, the Pro Downhillers will be going absolutely flying through here, but how does the average regular mountain biker tackle this section? You're gonna to wanna to do most of your braking up top so that you come into this turn at an appropriate speed that you feel safe taking this turn, and that's gonna accomplish a few things. Instead of coming into it really hard and braking here, that's gonna pack down your suspension so your bike doesn't work as well. You're asking your tires to make a turn and brake, so it's just too much. So if you get your braking done there and ride this a little bit smoother, this section will go a lot better. When you ride down this trail, zigzagging around all this stuff looks easier, but it's gonna be a lot safer if you just take this higher line. And the reason is, like I said, you're just pointing your bike straight down the trail. So if you're in a good proper body position and you're balanced over your pedals and you're looking far ahead, you can kind of eye up a pretty smooth line through there. Sure, there's lots of stuff on the sides, but there is a pretty straight line through there. So you're gonna wanna come over this crest. You're gonna wanna get most of your braking done and then just light on the brakes and go into that next section. And that next section, if you can use as little bit of a brake in there as you, you can, and you know, doing a few reps on this trail will definitely help you feel a little bit safer. Um, your bike's gonna ride a little bit better over it. You're gonna have better suspension and you'll just feel a little bit more confident. All right, so this is the scene of the accident, right? So you came over this log and it looks like your front tire hit that rock. We're good. And your handlebars ended up crabbing underneath you. So like crossing up and you went over the handlebars. So I feel like if you came in and were looking far ahead, you might've been a little less inclined to get on the front brake so hard because after this, you're kind of home free. So if you're riding with your head up, you might've felt a little bit more confident and not use quite so much rear brake or front brake going over this log. And that might've contributed to going over the handlebars. And then also coming over it, if you were on any kind of angle, like I said, whenever you're doing those forces into your front wheel and you're turning, it always magnifies it. So any kind of turn and an obstacle, that's why the downhill racers try to do those those really rough sections as straight as possible because every single nook and cranny magnifies the amount of steering input that you're putting in and it's really easy to have those handlebars turn underneath you so when it gets really rough try to square up your bike and take the straightest line possible until you get a smooth spot and then you can make a turn and then straight again all right so we're going to demonstrate keeping these lines smooth and you know that you don't have to go 50,000 miles an hour so down here you can see i'm pretty controlled and then where it gets rough, I'm gonna let off a little bit because it's just gonna make it smoother and then pin it straight and to the end of 99. All right, so on this top stuff, I don't have to be going super fast, but here, the speed is gonna help me. So I gotta let off. All right, folks, that's gonna pretty much wrap up this video. We'll do a little bit of closing over here, but I wanna thank my buddy, Mr. Jeff Lanowski. You ready to rip 99? I think we're gonna do a lot better with it. Um, so. Again, the idea of this video is to learn from Jeff, and then you'll see me and a good friend of mine do some practicing, and we'll, we'll, we're going to do it. Awesome. Um, just one more time. Thank you so much, Jeff. This was a ton of fun. This was, this was a blast. Yeah. Uh, folks, thanks for watching. Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. Keep the party on the pedals, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's it, man. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. I know. Bye -bye. My kids make fun of me. They, sound like, say I, they say I sound like, a, like Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Kids.